Hi everyone and welcome back uh, to my series of Python Unleashed. My name is Ajay and today's topic is we are going to generate these patterns using recursive function. If you can remember in my previous tutorial I have told that every program that you can develop with a loop we can develop the same program using a recursive function. So today we are going to generate these patterns using recursive function. We are not going to use any loops for this. Okay, so here is the code and by this code we are actually able to generate these patterns, these two patterns. Basically this pattern, this first one is getting generated by this and just making a slight change in the return value, we can generate this pattern, this particular pattern also. Okay, now the first thing is we have used uh, two recursive functions. Okay, the first recursive function is the outer loop. That's the name that I've given to the function. Okay, you can see over here. And uh, then we have a second uh, function which is called as inner loop. Now that is also the name of that function. Okay, so these are the two functions that we have used and these two functions are recursive function. And what I'm doing is in the outer loop function, I'm giving a call to the inner loop function. And you can see that in inner loop function also that I'm giving a call to itself, which says that this is a recursive function. Okay, and the outer loop function also you can see there is a call to outer loop itself. So even this is a, recur a recursive function, but then I'm also giving a, giving a call to the inner loop uh, function. Okay, so we will understand this slowly. And uh, now let us assume that the value of n is 5. For example, if I pass this value, I will call to this function first, that is the outer loop. Okay, this is the main function you can say and uh, so this actually works like an outer loop and this inner loop function basically works like an inner loop because if you can remember if i need to generate these patterns so we need a nested loop okay so let us start now for example the value of n if it is five okay so you can see the outermost loop the value of n is five suppose you have passed the value five then what I, what will happen is if this condition if n not equal to a zero, this condition will not uh, will become true because the value of n is uh, not equal to zero because the value of n is five. So what will happen? It will go inside this if statement, and again over here I'm giving a call to the outermost loop. That is the same function, the outer loop function. Okay. So what will happen? But I'm passing the value. You can see that is n minus one. So now the value that new value that I passed will be 4. First it was 5, now it is 4. And again, it will um, check this condition whether n is not equal to 0, the condition becomes true and then again I give a call to this function. So till the point the value of n so becomes 0, we are going to give a call to this function. So you can see that this is the first call that is 5 over here, then 4, then 3, two, one, and then at the last, this is zero. And this is where, this is the base case, you can say, right? This is the base case where the function will start returning. Now we will come to over here. Now the value of n is zero. So this condition basically goes false, right? Since this goes false, so it will go to the else part. And in the else part, I'm doing nothing but I'm just returning none. So I don't want any value to get returned. So I'm just saying return none. Okay, so when it returns, where it will return? It will return to its previous call, right? So it will come to over here, that is outer loop one. Why one? Because the value of n to this particular function over here will be one to its previous call. So from here, again, it jumped over here. So the n is one out here. And then, so it will return at the place where it was called. So it was called at this place. So it, it got returned now. And now from here, it will execute its next statement. Now, what is the next statement? Just, uh, just stay, you know, focus on this particular statement. The statement says print inner loop. Now this is a call to a new function, right? So you can see I've just given an arrow from here to the inner loop function. And the value that I'm passing to this is n. What is the value of n? You can see the value of n over here for the outer loop function was one. So that one I'm passing to the inner loop. So it gets called over here. 
and uh, now let's go to the inner loop now inner loop the value of n is 1 okay since the value of n is 1 this condition for the first place itself it gets false because the value is not equal to 1 and is equal to 1 isn't it so this goes to the else part and what I'm doing at the else part is returning the character that is the the ascii root character right the star character so this will get returned where I mean this will get returned at the place it was called so this is this was just this is just the first call isn't it so it was called over here understand it right this was the first call and at the first call itself this function actually got returned so it will return over here and what we are returning the character that is the star character right so this character will get written over here and what I'm doing over here is I'm printing that so we will have that one star okay so the asterisk uh, the asterisk character will get printed the star character in a simple language you can say so the first star got printed and then this statement got over so now what will happen since this loop got over now it will not go to the else part it will return to its previous call and what is the previous call previous call is this one that is at the value of n over here is 2 so it will return to its previous call and then again this statement will execute that is the loop that is the inner loop function and now at this place the value of n is 2 so this condition will go true because n is not equal to 1 and again then this is a innermost call that is inner loop function so it is also a recursive function so this will again give a call but this time again i'm passing the value as 1 so you can see the situation out here the first call was where the value of n was 2 and now the n uh, then again it got called and then it became 1 okay but then what I'm doing is once it becomes 1 then I'm returning star and once it returns star so it will go to its previous call and it will print one star isn't it okay and then again it is returning star so it will go to its previous call that is over here and it will print one more star okay so slowly slowly you can just understand maybe it is a bit bit confusing uh, so or I suggest you just take a paper and just try to draw this figure what I've done in front of you and just slowly try to understand so what is happening is this is acting like an outermost loop and this is acting like the innermost loop so for every one call this is running for one time for this two call this is running for two times for the outermost loop that is three the innermost loop will be running for three times and this is how actually these things are working right and uh, simple change if I have to make for example if I just go to the spider IDE and uh, this is the code that we have in front of uh, us right and if I run this so you, I'm just passing the first call that is 5 and uh, you can see we have this output out here but a simple change if I make that is return n return n okay and what will happen we will have the second pattern you can see out here this is the second pattern okay and this is how you can generate these patterns using the recursive function all I want you is just focus on this particular diagram and how the values we are passing and how the innermost functions are getting called and while returning how the functions are returning and again then we are giving a call to the inner loop and uh, the whole thing is working this way so again i repeat you know maybe it's, it's a bit confusing for you as a beginner if you this is the first time that you're working with recursive function so maybe it will get a bit confused because uh, this time we are working with two functions that are actually not one function but are, there are two recursive function so the first function is the outer loop function and the second function is the inner loop function both this both these functions are a recursive function okay so this is the code in front of you you can have this code and uh, you can just pause for a while note it down and then you can run it uh, onto your computer and see the output uh, trace it with the help of a paper or you can debug this and try to understand how every step is getting executed okay so this is one of the just i took this example just to 
demonstrate how to work with a uh, two recursive function and just to demonstrate to you that every program that we can uh, you know we can uh, develop with a loop we can develop the same program using a recursive function but understand one thing that the recursive function takes extra overhead because it gives a calls and then it stores those values uh, into a stack and then while returning it uses the stack so there is extra overhead that takes place with a recursive function and uh, there is extra space that it takes into the RAM, understand this. But there are certain situations as I told uh, in my previous tutorial, in one of my previous tutorials that uh, recursive function is very effective when you are working with uh, dynamic programming. So if you are doing some dynamic programming in that case, uh, you have to use this recursive function. It also helps to, uh, you know, simplify a solution. A recursive function helps to, you to, you know, ease down the solution. Understand this. There are many uh, situations where you have to use a recursive function, and the looping will will not will not be that effective as what the recursive function will be effective. Okay. So that's it for today. Bye for now.